Hey guys, it's Sherlock here. So I've been playing around on the PTR the last day and we have been exploring all the different ways to craft from two perkers, locked in three perkers, jewelry, weapon, and we've found the easiest and the most straightforward way to craft each of these items. So first off, we will show you some weapon crafting. We're going to have a look at the rapier. We're going to look at the two perkers, the three perkers, and have a chat about what you actually want to be locking in. Alright, so in Season 3, you're going to have basically three levels of crafting. So you're going to have your Tier 1 that uses one timeless shard that allows you to choose one perk. Whether that be a weapon perk or an attribute modifier with three prismatic items. So that is the new items introduced now. That will lock in a 675 gear score. With the Tier 2 crafts, it is essentially the same as Golden Scarab crafts from Season 2 that we already know. The only difference is now we have the Chromatic Seal. This comes from the Faction Vendor. They are 20,000 Faction Points and 5,000 Gold. So from there you can choose your 3 Prismatic Ingots. You can choose 2 Weapon Perks. Unfortunately I've only got one on me right now. You lock in your Azoth, and from there you can set in a 700 gear score item, but you're only locking in two perks. We'll talk about it a bit more later, but this is the one that I think is going to be important, and this is the main one people are going to be using. The third tier is going to be the highest one that we can lock in three perks. So here we could go Ken Tondo, we could go Ken, and we could go Warning Strikes. Add in your Azoth. This one here uses a Prismatic Scarab, which is made from 10 Golden Scarabs, and an Azoth Inductor, which is 70,000 tokens, I think, and 25,000 gold, which can only be bought once per week. So this is very limited. Along with the materials, you need a lot of the Prismatic materials to make this. Even though the fact you can lock in three perks, I do not think this is going to be used very often. I think people are going to be better rolling with the next tier down with the chromatic seal and the one golden scarab rather than locking in the three perks over here with the azoth inductor now we went through it and came up with a rough estimate of some costs all right so we've got some rough costs here so the top one uh, our estimated cost of what it's going to cost to lock in two perks a guaranteed 600 so you're guaranteed to get that third perk the only thing is it's going to be random the average cost of that we think is going to be around 21 22 000 gold and then the inductor one we think is going to be around that 260 270 000 gold depending on how much the prismatic materials end up sitting at um along with things like scarab pricing so you're looking at basically 10 times the materials and 10 times the price just to lock in that third perk which you can only do once a week so i think what's going to end up happening with this is we're going to end up seeing pretty much a cap on bis items of about 300 350k um so when it comes to getting those bis items from dungeons or caches or whatever that's effectively what they're going to be worth I imagine using this chromatic seal, this top option here, is actually going to be the preferred option uh, for crafting gear and gambling to try and make some money. Because with Abyss 3 perker from this, you're probably going to be looking around that 100 to 300k mark. Alright, so now we're going to go over the armor crafting. The process is exactly the same. It has that three tiers, basically the one perk you can lock in, the old golden scarab system that now uses a chromatic seal that locks in the two perks using the chromatic seal and then the lock in the three perks using the azoth inductor all right so when it comes to crafting the armor you have spin wheat for your light you have dark leather for your medium and you have mithril for your heavy all right so we're going to craft some light spin weave boots here which you can see uses about 20 times the materials as the one below it you can see this here which locks in the two perks the prismatic one that locks in the three so we can choose our elemental aversion our health our refreshing and then add in our azoth for our gem slot so we have our roughly the beaded straps 10 timeless shards our prismatic scarab which is 10 golden scarabs and our azoth inductor we'll hit craft and it will guarantee all three of those perks from there Alrighty, so now we're going to have a quick look at jewelry crafting. One thing that we have found on the PTR is you cannot craft 700 gear score jewelry. The highest we've managed to get to is around the 650 gear score mark. We're not sure what the reason for that is. 
Um, it doesn't seem like you can craft the mithril amulets with timely shards and scale at the moment, whether that's just a PTR issue or if it's going to move to live, we're unsure. So here we have the new mithril amulets, which are actually quite nice. They don't have a gem slot in it. So once we can craft this a 700 gear score, that will be really good because we don't have to lock it to a certain gem. Um, but as you can see, there is no option to craft with timeless shards or scarabs. So at the moment, crafting with jewelry is going to be locked to 650. Let's hope that doesn't move on to live. I'm sure it is just a PTR thing. Alrighty, so now we're just going to have a quick chat about some of the artifact items that we'll be using that will pretty much be guaranteed that everyone will have. So the first one's the Nimble Leather Coat. This one is definitely going to be used by Rapier players and maybe even healers as it gives so much refreshing. The next one is going to be the Attuned Leather Pants. This will basically just be for everybody else. So it's got Elemental Aversion, Refreshing and a random perk which can be changed. If you're unsure of how to build around a certain armor weight, on our website you go to the general section, scroll down until you get to this armor weight and it'll give you a clear table of how to build each set from light, medium and heavy to be at the optimal range. The next item that's basically going to be a must is Serenity the Greatsword. I imagine no other greatsword is going to be used except this one. And I am picking for your random perk, you're basically always going to want Ken. Alright, I've had mixed feelings on this one, the finisher. I've gone from thinking it was really good to thinking it was pretty mid-tier and now I think it's actually going to be the only rapier you're going to be using for blood. The fact that it can drop a random perk which you can then have thwarting strikes on, I don't think there's going to be any other rapiers possible to out damage this especially for bleed builds because you'll have your thwarting strikes which will be your extra damage and your finisher harmony which will give you an extra 15% more damage to bleeding targets which when running a blood rapier or even evade uh, will pretty much always be the fact. That accompanied with Ken Tondo, I think this will just be the best weapon in general for any rapiers. When it comes to Sword and Shield, I don't think there's going to be anything that can outclass the Butcher. All of the perks now since the changes are pretty mediocre. They've nerfed all the damages, Enchanted, Vicious, Thwarting Strikes, everything. They've gutted Ken. So I think this is really going to be the only option for Sword and Shield with the Round Shield. It's going to still produce some pretty good damage and I think it's going to be quite fun to play with. So we're still working on it, but if you want to find any of this information, it is going to be on our website. We're still working through this. This weekend, I'm going to put a lot of effort in to try and get a lot of this updated, ready for Season 3. We already have the tank page done, so if you go into builds, hit the tank button, it'll bring us in here. And if you get lost on any perks, all you need to do is look on this right hand side and we have some recommendations of what perks you should use along with the weapons. You can obviously see I still need to update that hatchet, we've still got Bane in there, but under the Greatsword and the Sword and Shield we have updated these along with the hammer that I believe Sundering Clear Out is going to be an absolute must on the hammer now, along with maybe Leeching and Hated for the tank. I haven't put too much thought into that yet, as I said we'll be updating a lot of this stuff. Alright, to those of you that are still here, thank you very much. I hope we have helped with a clear idea of how to craft in Season 3. There can be a lot of confusion about what is actually needed. There is a lot of components that goes into crafting a new world. If you want to support us at all, you can come and follow me on Twitch. Come and join the community. We have a good laugh and a good time over there. Or you can drop us a like, drop a comment down below. And I'll see you next time.